Hey guys, and welcome to my vlog. So this week in fantasy world building, we're going to be talking about government. There are lots of different types of government, so you're going to want to figure out which one is going to be best suited to your story. You're going to want to know what each of the relevant countries in your world has going on. And so we'll go over a few of the details of several different types, but I'm not going to go into every single one of them because Google exists and you have to do your own research too. <laughs> We will start with the most common one that shows up in fantasy world building, and that is a monarchy. So monarchies tend to come in two different forms, absolute and constitutional. They are hereditary positions for the most part. If you're having an absolute monarchy, then your ruler can pretty much do whatever the heck they want without regard for laws restricting them. If you have a constitutional monarchy, then other people are putting limits on the power of the monarch. A constitutional government is basically your government is being run by whatever principles you have laid out in the Constitution. Now, a democracy, when done right, is the power of the people. You can either have a direct democracy in which the people are voting directly for whatever measures are passing, or you can have representational democracy where people are voting for a representative and the representative will then vote on whatever measures on the assumed will of the people. A republic is very similar where the elected officials are voting rather than the people doing it directly. Another option is dictatorships and oligarchy. They are very similar in which power is concentrated in the hands of a very small group. They are usually the wealthiest and most powerful individuals in whatever society. Dictatorships wield absolute power and are unrestricted by law or any other authority. A commonwealth is very similar to a confederation in which various states, nations, etc. have come together to work as one unit for the good of the people. And lastly, on the list is a theocracy. This is based on the laws of whatever religion happens to be in power. The government is run by the laws of the religion, and the highest rungs of the government are people who are at the highest rungs of whatever the religion happens to be. There are lots of other options, so you can do your research, and if you don't like any of these, then, you know, look into anarchy. Once you figure it out, what types of governments are going to be useful to your story, ask yourself, has the country in question always had this type of government, and are they going to keep it for the entirety of the story? What I mean by this is this is where your history will come into play. What happened to implement this style of government? and what may happen in your story that will topple it. You want to choose a type of government that best suits your story and the situations that your characters are going to be encountering. How do your characters and society as a whole feel about the current government institution? Is it functional? Is it corrupt? What are the challenges and benefits to it? If you've been following the series, then at this point you'll already have your religion developed, so you can figure out what the separation of church and state looks like. If it's a theocracy, then there is no separation. If it's any of the other varieties, then it's kind of a mixed bag of what you want to do there. You also want to know what are the hierarchies within the chosen government? Is there mobility within it? And how are the leaders selected and can they be removed if the need for it comes up? You also want to know which groups are allowed to participate in the government. Sometimes there are restrictions because people are douchebags and specific groups are not allowed to have a say in their representation. You'll see this a lot through history where some groups are denied access to participation in government, whether they're not allowed to vote or they're not allowed to hold positions within the government, etc. That can be a huge catalyst for change in your society you're building. So you want to know what rights are citizens afforded? Who can be a citizen and what are the steps it takes to become one? How involved can they be in the government processes? Do people vote and if so, for what? You might have a monarchy but local elections for mayors, magistrates, etc. And what makes a person eligible to vote? Or to run for any of these positions? Who is deciding the policies? And how can laws and policies be contested? You really want to know how far does the power of the government extend? Do they have authority over only a specific group or over everyone? Does the concept of citizenship exist? Are you beholden to the country of your birth even if you leave it? And alternatively, how does immigration work if your characters are going to a different nation? 
Remember that the government you choose is going to be creating the laws of the land that are going to drastically affect how your characters move about their world. We previously discussed legalities in world building, so I won't go into too many details here, but I will link that video below. You just want to be aware that unjust laws are a catalyst for change. Change and conflict are very important to your story. The government can be part of your plot points if you need to overthrow the big bad power. Choose a government that is reflective of that. It gives your characters something big to fight against, or alternatively, it gives them something to fight for. So I hope that was helpful and will give you a little boost in developing the government for your fantasy worlds. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again next week with another vlog. Bye guys!